great, great. Good morning. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish, along with George Kurtz today here on the show, filling in for Davis Maddock. We've got plenty to cover here with you on the show. The All-Star break is coming fast and furious in Major League Baseball. We found out all of the members of the All-Star team, of course, that is subject to change over the next few days due to injuries as well. Uh, also, of course, very exciting finish at Wimbledon, no doubt. And George, it is great to be with you here on this Monday. Thanks for stepping in today. Uh, always my pleasure, Craig, talking a little small, uh, fantasy sports with you. Good weekend of baseball here. Hopefully we'll get a good final week before the All-Star break of baseball this week. Yeah, no doubt. And we're going to get to that in just a second. But, George, uh, you know, halfway through the baseball season, we've definitely seen some surprises. We've also seen some disappointments. But I think, by and large, adding an extra wild card really has helped. I know that there are a lot of people who bet on teams to win the pennant, teams to win the World Series. Seems like we may have uh, some better races this season. For the most part, I, I pretty have a, pretty much have a good feeling who I think is going to get in. How about you? I mean, uh, I don't mind the extra wild card. It, it worked out in the beginning. Eventually, though, and I don't think it's going to happen this year, though, it wouldn't surprise me. We're going to get a sub-500 team in there. You know, my problem is not so much the extra wild card teams. That so many teams aren't trying. I mean, it's, uh, there's a lot of bad teams in baseball. I mean, a lot of bad teams. Teams just... The owners are pocketing the money. I mean, it seems to me there's more bad than good. That we get more bad baseball games each night where uh, a good team's facing a team not so good. So I think they do uh, do something to fix that. But the playoffs should be somewhat interesting, especially I think well, sort of like in football. Once you get past the wild card round, divisional round is really where the playoffs start. I think the same thing is going to be in baseball. Once we get rid of the uh, the first round here, and once you go move on to the second, third World Series, then uh, the games will be much better. All right, let's get to our headlines here on the show. And, hey, who would have thought that we'd be headlining with the Baltimore Orioles? But what a really nice season they've had. They sweep the Angels, pretty much put the Angels out of any playoff contention. And they have now won their eighth straight game. Unbelievable season for Baltimore to be in this thing. Novak Djokovic wins Wimbledon, but he will miss the U.S. Open due to his vaccination status. Wayne Rooney set to become the new manager for D.C. United in the MLS. And Tony Romo wins the American century celebrity title by the way this week also is the british open and on wednesday we'll have a preview of that with dubs he will appear on the show uh but i mean george the baltimore orioles i mean that's probably a good place to start they've got some really good performances by the way some surprising pitching performances in fantasy this season the orioles are usually not a team where you want to target fantasy starters uh but listen let's give them credit they moved the fences in a little bit in left field clearly that has made a difference and a team that's not afraid to spend money. They've done no spending over the last five years, but just maybe 2023 we'll see a resurgence where the Orioles you know, jump back into this thing. You do wonder that. Uh, you do wonder this also, this uh, the way they're playing this year will make Angelos, Peter Angelos, the owner. I know they're fighting there, so maybe he won't be the owner next year anyway. I think there's some lawsuits going on there. But maybe spend some money in the offseason as well because this team can hit. I mean, they've got hitters here. Ryan Mountcastle, Adley Rochman's come up here. I mean, Austin Hayes, Anthony Santander, Cedric Mullins, Trey Mancini, assuming Mancini stays with the team. A lot of noise he could be traded. Mets have been mentioned there at uh, the deadline there. But they can hit. They can just add some starting pitching. We were, we were hoping to see Grayson Rodriguez, right, that he suffered the injury. I wonder if that's right. going to kill him for the rest of the year. Maybe we don't see him. Uh, but they got some other young pitchers as well here. You know, if one of those two can hit. You know, D.L. Hall comes to mind, by the way. One of those two guys can hit, and you add somebody in? I mean, you add a, a veteran free agent or, you know, a top free agent, this team can be dangerous again. The Orioles at one time did have money, and they spent money. This is back in the 90s when the early Camden Yards first opened here. So they're sort of a, dare I say, an exciting team. Now yeah, our own Phil Backer, our ex-producer uh, for us at Sirius XM, he's got to be excited. <laughs> Orioles look good. Not a big fan of what they did to Camden, by the way. Uh, they didn't move those fences a little back. They moved them to the Grand Canyon back. I know even some of the oil players don't uh, like it there. But that being said, seems to be working for them. Yeah, no, definitely so. And I, and I think that you got to commend them for having a good year, especially playing in that division with the Yankees and the Red Sox and the uh, Toronto Blue Jays. Definitely a really good season for them, for sure. What else piqued your interest this weekend, George? I know there was a lot of baseball on. Of course, we had Wimbledon, no doubt. A couple of weeks away from NFL training camps, for sure. And I know you were working here at SportsGrid this weekend. So what piqued your interest? 
a lot of baseball, right? A lot, a lot of baseball this weekend. I pretty much watched as much baseball as I possibly could. Yankees, Red Sox, of course, and that didn't disappoint mm-hmm. the games for the most part. Were, they were, may have been long. I know people hate the uh, long Yankee Red Sox right. games, but yeah. they were at least interesting, right? They were fun here. Uh, I think the other, you know, you're watching the Atlanta and the Mets, right? Go back and forth at each other, back and forth. Found it mm-hmm. somewhat curious that the Mets won't admit this, but. I was literally really looking forward to Alcantara versus Scherzer uh, yesterday. It was, that was the match that uh, really could have been or should have been, but the Mets backed up Scherzer a day uh, so that he, he could pitch today against Atlanta. I understand right. that. You know, Atlanta is the division, uh, you know, right now your rival here. But you end up losing that game now to Miami. All right now this game sort of a yeah. must win here because you didn't have – I know it didn't matter. There was a 0-0. It going didn't to matter. Really. It was the <laughs> thing. But still, I wanted to see the Matt pitching matchup. We don't get that all that often. It would have been, uh, been nice to see here. Yeah, uh, Taiwan Walker pitched great yesterday, so I don't think that there's any love lost with throwing him seven shutout innings, no doubt. But good point by George. Coming up next, it's time for us to check in on the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Home Run Derby is one week from tonight, and the All-Star Game is one week from tomorrow. So we're going to check in and see who made it and potentially some players who did not. But remember, there's going to be a lot of players dropping out of this thing. We already know of three or four of them that aren't even going to be playing in the game. And so there will be injury replacements as well. And uh, we'll take a look at the American League, the National League. We got, of course, Fantasy Reality and the Sports Grid 60 right here on this Monday. It is Fantasy Sports Today on Sports Grid. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be right back after this. The early line. And Otani, as a hitter, his batting average on the season, 259, right? And judge that at 287. How much does Otani being a pitcher outweigh the Yankees potentially being a 110 win team? Record just doesn't seem to matter that much. That is, I think, going to be the most difficult thing to navigate in this race. Only here. on Sports Grid. The morning after. I think Buffalo is a fantastic team. Do you think Buffalo is yeah. deserving of that favorite price? I do. Any bet that you're taking on the Buffalo Bills, I mean, you want them to make it all the way because if they get in the number one seed, that's what you want. But I also like the yeah. Ravens. They're getting Lamar back over nine and a half is minus 170, okay? So that's how that's how favored they are to just get the double-digit wins. And I think that, you know, they're definitely going to have a chip on their shoulder. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Miles Michaelis. Uh, a couple of years ago, Gray, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball. And then he was disappearing for a couple of years with injuries. And wow, is he back? ERA under three. And the whip is incredible. I think he's at the top of the National League, if I'm not mistaken. Michaelis is like probably a guy who I could see potentially having a three and a half ERA or under for the season, which is, you know, that's, that's solid. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live win. prime oh, yeah, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Great, great. 
So welcome back, Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. The Midsummer Classic is next Tuesday night in Los Angeles. And yesterday, we found out who will be rewarded to get to play in the game. Of course, we found out the starters a few days ago. And uh, yesterday, we got some of the starters, some of the reserves. So George and I are going to go through it. We'll talk about this from a fantasy perspective, no doubt. Uh, but George, you know, listen, there's a, there are always going to be snubs and, and people are going to be upset when their favorite players did not make it. There's definitely a few that we'll get into here on the show, but I, I think it's just so premature because uh, players are going to get knocked out of this game due to injury. Uh, pitchers are not going to be able to pitch in this game. And so I would say that this is by far not the final roster of the American or National League. And I just want to say that because I guarantee you that by the time Wednesday, Thursday, Friday comes, we're going to get some additions to this. So be patient. Oh, of course. All right. We're going to have players who don't, who don't want to go. And they go, oh, I got a, you know, I got a sore calf. I got a sore arm. I can't pitch. And, uh, you know, so they'll bow, bounce up. There'll be injuries. They'll be, they'll be applaud. Teams talk to their players, really. You, sh you shouldn't go. You know, but we need you to take those three days off there and rest up. All right. There'll be stuff like that. So, uh, yes. Uh, I don't get upset about these things at all. I mean, maybe when I was a kid, you do. I understand. Because it was different times back then when we were kids. We didn't see our uh, teams, uh, plays with other teams all that much. You know, so you wanted you wanted your favorite player to go there, but no, uh, to me it's like it's sort of like Cy Young all voting and everything else. Love talking about it, but deep down, I don't care. Yeah, and uh, and I'll I'll go over some of those names who I think will end up making it. But let's uh, take a look at least at the infield, the American League. Alejandro Kirk, what a fantasy season he has had at catcher. Uh, George, I would say maybe the best fantasy catcher in baseball. Uh, Wilson Contreras had a great year too. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is the starting first baseman. Jose Altuve at second, Rafael Devers at third, and then Tim Anderson at shortstop. So, I mean, most of these are not surprises. Again, these are the voted in players that we found out over the weekend. And I would say, you know, pretty much, you know, they got it pretty much right. I know Tim Anderson not having the best year, probably. I think that's fair. He's missed some time. Uh, but shortstop's pretty thin, I think, in the American League. Uh, I mean, Kirk, you can make, uh, you want to make some arguments here. Kirk doesn't play catcher all that much. I mean, Moreno's there now, and uh, Jansen was their starting catcher at the beginning of the season. He plays a lot of DH. That being said, catcher in the American League is just wow. And his numbers are fantastic. He can hit. You know, but he has, this is, this is, honestly, you're splitting hairs here. But there's nobody else a catcher. Trevino made it for the Yankees. And, okay, he's been good for the Yankees, but not an all-star, really, when you think of the numbers there. Just good for the Yankees there. Uh, Tim Anson's not an all-star this year. Sorry, he's not. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's weak position, but he's been hurt a lot this year. How many times has been on the IL? Two, three times. Not having a great year. He's not an all-star catcher. Uh, that being said, the argument would be, well, who would you take over him? Correa's also been banged up a lot. You know, so where are we going here? So I get it. Uh, you know, Altuve, no problem. Devers certainly has had a fantastic season. Mm -hmm. All you've been for MVP. All right, now let's go to the outfield, and we'll start off with Mike Trout, who. Looked like he was on his way to a fantasy MVP season, but my gosh, this is, he's in the worst slump of his career right now, George, over the last month. John Carlos Stanton will start. He, of course, plays for the Yankees, Aaron Judge, no question, and then Shohei Otani, and that's really who everyone will want to see play on Tuesday night. Yeah, well, Otani was voted in as a pitcher and the DH, right? Uh, so, uh, good. Uh, Otani, in my mind, by the way, is the MVP in the American League. I don't see how he can't be, and I'm, gonna, I'm a Yankee fan, but it's Otani. He's a top 10 pitcher, top 10 hitter. He saved your roster spot. Fantastic player. He's a unicorn. So we don't, we don't, we haven't seen this. This is Babe Ruth all over again here. So uh, no surprise there. Judge, certainly. You're right about Trout. Judge is actually in a big slump as well. They're both in major slumps here. Trout's a little worse than Judge's. Stanton, you can make an argument there are better players out here, especially if you want to consider Alvarez. I know he's not going to play in the game anyway because he's on the I.L. Right. But if you want to consider Alvarez an outfielder, I would certainly take Pedro Alvarez over Stanton. Yeah, for sure. Uh, not Pedro, but Jordan, no doubt. Pedro yeah, was Pedro. Uh, Where was that once upon a time too, dude. <laughs> once upon a time with the Pirates. Where did I get Pedro Alvarez from? Yeah, I don't know, but he was good for a few years. All right, let's go to the All Star Reserve. So th this is what we found out yesterday, and these are all the fantasy guys who are probably outperforming their ADP this season. Jose Trevino, great trade for the Yankees, getting him. Luis Arias has been fantastic. The Twins uh, got two All Stars this year. Uh, along with Buxton, uh, Xander Bogarts for the Red Sox, Jose Ramirez. Great to see the uh, the award go to Andres Jimenez of the Cleveland Guardians. He's had a nice year too. George Springer of the Blue Jays, and there is Buxton. He deserves it, no doubt. Julio Rodriguez gets in, George, from the Seattle Mariners on pace for a 30-30 season. 
And as you mentioned, Jordan Alvarez for the Astros is going to need to be replaced. He's had a phenomenal year, but he was placed on the injured list on a Sunday. So they'll need a DH replacement for him. Yeah, what a shame about that uh, being placed. Uh, I wonder what takes him out of the home run chase. What is he, two behind Judge, something like that, uh, for the race day? He's been really, uh, I mean, tearing it up there. So uh, shame that that happened uh, uh, for Jordan. Uh, I think they're, I think they're, I think we also, that's another thing we're going to see, right? We're going to see teams put players on the IL now because they get those three, maybe four extra days where you don't have to worry about it. It's a day, not games right. you missed here. So with the All-Star break, you're guaranteed three, maybe four. So we'll see that. I do wonder if that's part of the reason why the Astros did this. He'll be eligible to play in the uh, first game after the All-Star break, which I believe is a, right. uh, it might be a doubleheader versus the Yankees. I'll come and think of it. So he'll be uh, be back for that series, that little doubleheader series there. So uh, so the only issue I have here, I mean, uh, once again, if I'm going to play the uh, the splitting hairs type, Jimenez, all right, a nice season, not so sure he's an all-star. But once again, it's shortstop again, right? We're we're stuck at this position here. This is not much there uh, to vote for. Yeah, Bogart's probably the best one of of the position, but uh, Anderson, Bogart, and Jimenez are the other ones. All right, now let's go to the starting pitchers. And uh, Shohei Otani, uh, of course, is makes it from the Angels. I don't think he'll start. I think it will be Shane McClanahan of the Tampa Bay Rays. Nestor Cortez has had a fantastic year for the Yankees. Alec Manoa, same for the Blue Jays. Framber Valdez of Houston's had a nice year, too. He gets in. Uh, now the names that you know may be surprising, Martin Perez. Of course, you have to have a representative from every every team. So Martin Perez makes it for Texas. Paul Blackburn is going to be the Oakland A's representative. And Garrett Cole makes it, uh, George, from the New York Yankees. Yeah, uh, you said uh, Perez, Blackburn, your, your reps there, they have to get in. Uh, Perez, sort of interesting. He's trending in the wrong direction now, right? Been lit up a couple yeah. of starts in a row now, which the Rangers can't be happy about right before the trade deadline. And you got to think they might want to move him. Uh, Blackburn, uh, you pitch in Oakland, you should do well here. Uh, I think when we think about Oakland pitches, we're all wondering about Frankie Montas and where he's going to end up, right? Uh, Garrett Cole is there. Nesta Cortez, is, uh, it's funny with Nesta Cortez. Makes the All-Star game. Numbers look great. 50-50 in his last six starts. Some good, some bad. Uh, I don't think he'll be in the Yankees starting rotation in September. I expect him mm. to upgrade at the deadline here. And I think Nesta Cortez is going to be the odd man out. Mm, it very well could be. We'll see. Another Yankee made the all-star team. This is not a surprise. Clay Holmes, who's closed games for the Yankees this season at an effective rate. No doubt he deserves it. So does Emmanuel Class A of Cleveland. The Tigers representative this season is going to be Gregory Soto, left-handed relief pitcher. And boy, he could probably could have put more than one Oriole in, I think. But Jorge Lopez gets the call for Baltimore. And if they're out of it, that's a name, George, that's definitely going to be traded. Yeah, uh... Lopez struggled last weekend, right, against Minnesota, blew a couple of, not this weekend, last week, a couple of weekends ago against Minnesota, blew a couple of saves. If he didn't blow those saves, man, the Orioles would be right there in the American League. He's behind Toronto. Uh, I mean, really a, kind of an interesting thing there. My only qualm here is this, and uh, because Soto's not the uh, lone representative for the uh, Tigers, right? They took Miguel Cabrera. It's like Pujols got taken oh, in the right. commissioner's yeah. pick. I understand it's the commissioner's pick he's allowed, but when you do that, then you don't need another representative. Do the Tigers really deserve two representatives? Has Soto had an all-star year? No. No, you took Cabrera. Who, by the way, you can make an argument, Cabrera should be on the all-star team anyway. He's had a Possibly. pretty good year. Right? Yeah. He should be, should have been their lone representative. So I, I would not have taken, I don't know what the rules are, but I would not have taken another Tiger if possible. There'll be other more deserving players. Yeah. Who, who am I missing from Seattle that made? Oh, uh, Rodriguez. But yeah, Ty France Julio, is the one yeah. name that uh, I, I think France not, is the first replacement, right? And he'll replace Alvarez. And then some other players we'll get into, and we'll uh, review that in the coming days here on the show. But coming up next, we'll take a look at the National League All-Stars and talk about their fantasy seasons as well. So stay on the grid. Break, break. Pharrell, coast to coast. So the Panthers get Mayfield, and now it's on because I know at some level you're saying that they're not just handing him the starting job. This is what they felt like was the situation all offseason. 
get someone to compete for that starting job against Darnold. They've done that. They feel like this team now, with better quarterback play, will be much better to compete for, for a playoff spot, which I think is very realistic now going forward. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. If they are going to play this kid 30 minutes a night, 75 games, oh, he may win work of the year. He made a move in the summer league first game. I closed my eyes, and I swore to God I thought I saw Kevin Durant. Then you see him on a defensive end. That looks a little bit like Giannis. He could block shots, rebound, lead the break himself. So now it's about expectation, and can he rise above them? So it'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma City deals with him. Betting above the rim. The early line. The NFC East here. If we place them in order at the FanDuel Sportsbook of pricing to win the division in 2022, it's the Cowboys at a plus 120 price. The Dallas Cowboys, probably rightfully priced here for me, but the Philadelphia Eagles have had a very good offseason, adding weapons, and also the Dallas Cowboys maybe subtracting, but just saying, we got Dak Prescott. We think he's the best quarterback in the division, and that should be enough. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. We are already seeing a two-team race for the American League pennant. Who do you think could be that third team to challenge either Houston or New York? I think it could be the Rays. This offense has been, I would say, frustrating, underwhelming, annoying so far this year, but they have upside. They've got good components to their team. It's just a question of whether or not all those components will hit in a way that is conducive to them reaching their side. I think they could. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die. For and them. God being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we have to go to San Jose too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. And welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. ESPN is reporting that a sign and trade is likely in the NBA that would send Sun Center DeAndre Ayton to the Indiana Pacers. If that breaks uh, today on the show, we will give that to you. Otherwise, we'll cover it this afternoon for you on Newswire at 2 o'clock Eastern. I'm Craig Mish today, along with George Kurtz here on the show, and we're talking a little fantasy baseball, reviewing the National League All-Stars, George. And without further ado, let's get into the starters in the infield. Wilson Contreras, who's having a fantastic season for the Cubs. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year, so either he leaves and gets a big deal, or maybe he's traded. Who knows? Hard to trade catchers during the season. You don't see that very often. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, what a year he's had at first base. Jazz Chisholm Jr. of the Marlins gets the start at second base. I don't think he will play in the game on Tuesday, but we will see. Uh, Manny Machado plays third for the Padres, potential MVP there. And then uh, speaking of free agents, the Dodgers will have to make a decision on Trey Turner at the end of the season, George. But if we know anything about the Dodgers, what they'll probably do is let Trey Turner go and then replace him with someone else who becomes an all-star for the next five years, too. The Dodgers don't like giving out those, you know, hundreds of millions. They like the, like, 100 to 200, you know, and to sort of move the money around a little bit. Yeah, I'll be interested to see where Trey Turner goes in the offseason. Uh, great player here. I have no qualms with any of this. I think they got this exactly right. Now, we're talking five superstars here. I do think uh, the Cubs are going to have to trade Contreras. You mentioned it's hard to trade a catcher because you know you don't know the pitching staff, right? It's like trading a quarterback in football, you don't know the system. So it can be difficult, but Contreras is going to move, if I had to guess. I'm going to say the Mets, right? They just lost their starting catcher again here in McCann. Yeah. They don't want to call up for our top prospect, Francisco Alvarez, because he's not ready defensively yet. 
So I got to think Contreras to the Mets makes an awful lot of sense here. We know Cohen's got the money to re-sign him. So it wouldn't just be a, uh, you know, one a three-month deal here and he's gone. Uh, so Contreras to the Mets is where I'm going. Yeah, McCann uh, looks like an oblique injury. He's on the injured list. And so, uh, you know, certainly they need some help there. All right, let's look at the outfield. Mookie Betts gets in from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. was the leading vote getter in the NL. Hey, Jock Peterson gets in for the Giants as the starter. That's pretty cool. And then William Contreras, Wilson's brother, will replace Bryce Harper, and he'll be the starting designated hitter, George. So Jock Peterson gets in. Are there a lot of Tommy Pham haters here who are glad he slapped them? Uh, it's a little surprised that you can't you can't do better than Peterson and Contreras. Uh, I got some issues here. I'm not uh, I'm not saying either I shouldn't be on with team. I don't know. I'm just I'm not thrilled about this. This is uh to me seems a little strange here. These guys gone on Mookie Betts, of course. Even Acuna, who missed the first month of the season, you can make an argument he's he's an all star, but maybe not an all star this season. It really depends right. on how you look at this. You know, do you want the best players regardless of the season they're having in? All right, all right, then that's fine. You know, and the game doesn't mean anything anymore. So I'm, I'm okay with however you want to do this, by the way. You know, when the game meant something, then I didn't like it the way they were doing it. And then you got to have the best players got to come in. It's just the way it has to be. No more of this team representative crap. The fans can't vote anymore either. All right, you have to have the best players when it meant something. Now that it doesn't, and it is an exhibition of the game, I'm not as really as uh, – as nuts about it, but uh, I got to think you could do better than Peterson, Contreras. And like I said, you could certainly make the argument as great a player as a Cooner is. And I don't want to hear people. I'd love to have him on my fantasy team. But, <laughs> you know, probably not having a uh, an, uh, an MVP, an all-star year. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's get to the reserves. We found these out yesterday. Let's go through them one by one. A backup catcher for the NL will be the Braves' Travis Darno. Nolan Arenado from the Cardinals makes it, no doubt. Very deserving. Same with Pete Alonzo. Jeff McNeil, another Met, is in. C.J. Crone, first-time All-Star for the Rockies. Dansby Swanson will be the backup shortstop. Uh, Starling Marte for the New York Mets is an All-Star, although he left the game over the weekend injured, so we'll see if he can play in this one. Kyle Schwarber, no doubt, is having a fantastic June into July. Juan Soto is the lone national. And Ian Happ is the lone Chicago Cub, George, that is going to make the appearance in Los Angeles. Yeah, I don't think I have much of a problem with any of these guys here. I mean, uh, you know, Marte, I don't think he's having, I don't know if he's having an all-star season. You know, 291, 940, 10 stall baseman hurt a lot. But I think, uh, you know, I don't have a qualm with it. Jeff McNeil's almost the same thing, right? Good, solid numbers here, but been hurt a bunch here. Once again, if you, if you want to uh, throw stones here uh, of this, I don't really have an issue. Ian Happ, you mentioned, is the lone, uh, you know. Wilson Contreras the, Contrera, the oh, other Contrera's one. Contreras is actually there too, clear. yeah. So they didn't have yeah. to take Happ. Right, so they got two guys there. Arenado, Alonzo, Cron, Swanson, uh, really deserve. Remember Swanson? We all everybody hated him in the first six weeks of the season. He's turned it around big time there. Kyle Schwarber loves the month of June for crying out loud. What's he had like forty home runs in June the past two years? Uh, he's been amazing. So not really. Uh, like I said I'd be nitpicking here to really go against anybody. But Marte and McNeil both going for the Mets. I would probably that's probably where, where I would uh point out that maybe they could have done a little better here. Yeah, we'll see. And Marte uh, is expected to avoid the IL, but look, naturally the game is next week. We'll have to see. Uh, Schwarber, hopefully, in the home run derby, by the way. All right, let's go to pitchers. Clayton Kershaw of the Dodgers. He will pitch in his home stadium for sure. Sandy Alcantara of the Marlins should be the starter in the NL, no doubt. Corbin Burns, the Cy Young Award winner from the Brewers, is back yet again. Luis Castillo of the Cincinnati Reds. Max Fried of the Braves. Tony Gonsolin's had a fantastic first half for the Dodgers. And then Joe Musgrove from the San Diego Padres, George, who will be a free agent at the end of the season and uh, going to get a huge payday, George, no doubt. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, fantastic season with Joe. Really been a, so a different pitcher since coming over to the Padres, right? Yeah. And that kind of guy, and good for him. All right, so uh, it's always good to see here. I don't have anything here. I, I all these guys are, you know, certainly deserving to be there. Uh, I know some people pointed out, well, you know, Kershaw's only made 11 starts, eh, 2.4 ERA, 1.01 whip. He's certainly an all-star. I mean, uh, who, who would you take over of you if you didn't want to go with Clayton? Uh, Gonsolin's probably the play player that no one talks about enough. I know some people argue that he should start the all-star game over Alcatraz because it's in L.A. I mean, that's the only reason you'd be starting him because it's in L.A. Other than that, I think, by the way, if you're going to start somebody in L.A., wouldn't it be Kershaw? Not so much Gonsolin anyway, but, uh, I mean, Alcantara's been, wow, 
I mean, uh, he, he's sort of must watch TV here. Uh, I, I think Miami needs to be a little smart about him. I think yes, they were yes, they only let him go seven innings. You can't have him go two hundred fifty plus innings. But man, this guy's fantastic, and uh, he's. And then, with no doubt in my mind, he's the starter. I could see the National League doing something a little silly because it's in L.A. and maybe want an L.A. starter here. But Alcantara has been the best pitcher in baseball, more or less, the National League. Yeah. No, I, I think that they'll end up starting him. And remember, Brian Snicker, George, has to make that decision, the manager of the Braves. And, boy, snubbing Sandy from that start, knowing he has to face him, I doubt that's going to happen. I think he'll end up being the starter there. Unless baseball, you're right, steps in. All right, closers, relievers, Edwin Diaz. My gosh, has he been unbelievable this season, untouchable. Same with Josh Hader of the Brewers. Ryan Helsey's put together a nice season for the Cardinals in the ninth inning. The Pirates representative is David Bednar. And then the most anonymous name in the entire list, American League National League, George, there's no doubt, it is Joe Mantiply, the relief pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, you know, Mantiply has had a fantastic year, no question, <laughs> but definitely for those people who say, you know, yeah, we, we shouldn't have to have one player from each team in, this is going to get the uh, the headlines. But I mean, I think this guy's had a great year too, and you have to have relief pitchers in the All-Star game, so why not? He's likely to be that uh, that last guy too, uh, in case uh, the game goes to you know extra innings. They'll use him. Uh, they usually save somebody, and I think uh, Manta Play will be that. My argument would be, you know, you can make a pretty good case that well, their all star, especially a catcher over Contreras, might be Dylan Varsho. You know, qualifies. They sort of like uh, Eleanor Kirk doesn't always play there, but he's qualified there. I might have gone Varsho there. Other than that, uh, Diaz has been fantastic. You know, everybody and their mother, me included, thought the Mets got trucked when they made that deal for Edwin Diaz. Craig, did they win the deal? I mean, they're certainly winning it now, yeah. right? I mean, Kalenic can't get out of the minor leagues, go, you know, so it's strange how that worked out. Hater, could the Brewers trade him by the deadline? I don't think so. They're in it this year, no uh, but makes you wonder. You may have said that Hensley had a fantastic year. It should be the closer for the uh, Cardinals over uh, Gallegos. So they're really not working out there. And Bednar's another guy. We know the Pirates might, uh, uh, might move, and we're hearing rumors that they've turned down deals. How true that is, who, who knows? You know, like, oh, yeah, they turned down a deal just so people offer more for them. So we don't know if it's true or not, but Bednar could be on the move by the end of the month as well. So in the end, um, what do you think? Who, who has the better squad, George? Um, you know, it, I mean, gosh, I mean, it sort of feels like the American League has, like, ridiculous amount of power. Uh, but, but, I mean, I suppose you look at the NL2 and Schwarber and you add some of these other names in there and – I'd give him a shot, but, uh, I mean, at least on paper, I think the AL will be favored. I think the AL will be favored, and they've won a bunch of these games, or uh, an overwhelming majority of the games in the past, what, 10, 15 years, whatever it might be. Uh, I think it'll be the American League. I think it'll be an under because the power's great. Pitching's too good. Pitching's – these guys are all – one inning, they're all going to throw 98-plus. You know, they right. want that radar gun to be up there for the All-Star game, but everybody's watching here. So I think it'll be a very low-scoring game. 4-3, in my mind, would be, whoa, wow, I didn't see that coming. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that if they go to extra innings, George, it becomes a home run derby. I don't think that they play extra innings anymore. I think they turned it into a home, a home run derby. I'm pretty sure about that. You know, that actually might be exciting to me if we didn't have it the day before. You know, and how would they do it? Are yeah. some players still not going to uh, do it? Would Aaron Judge still say no? You know, I I wonder, I wonder how that works. Run derby, by the way, who do you think? Who do you think? I mean, Schwarber, I got, he's in it, right? He'll have to be in it. Pete Alonzo, he always uh, wants to do it. Alonzo hasn't said yes yet. He said, yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't said yes Stanton? yet. Stanton hasn't said yes yet. But I think Stanton, Stanton pretty much not the cat out of the bag that he's going to do it. But he hasn't said yes yet. Guerrero said no. And Judge says right. he'll never do it again after he won in Miami. Right. So uh, I'll go Stan if Stanton plays. I'm going Stanton. Yeah, probably so. Really good showing for Stanton in the home run derby in San Diego, but did not win the one in Miami, ironically. All right, we will take Alonzo a quick time out here on the show. We come back next. Time for us to do some fantasy or reality. Great, great.
Pharrell, coast to coast. So the Panthers get Mayfield, and now it's on because I know at some level you're saying that they're not just handing him the starting job. This is what they felt like was the situation all offseason. Get someone to compete for that starting job against Darnold. They've done that. They feel like this team now, with better quarterback play, will be much better to compete for, for a playoff spot, which I think is very realistic now going forward. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. If they are going to play this kid 30 minutes a night, 75 games, oh, he may win work of the year. He made a move in the summer league first game. I closed my eyes, and I swear to God, I thought I saw Kevin Durant. Then you see one of the defensive end, that looks a little bit like Giannis. He could block shots, rebound, lead the break himself. So now it's about expectation. And can he rise above them? So it'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma City deals with him. Betting above the rim. The early line. The NFC East here. If we place them in order at the FanDuel Sportsbook of pricing to win the division in 2022, it's the Cowboys at a plus 120 price. The Dallas Cowboys, probably rightfully priced here for me, but the Philadelphia Eagles have had a very good offseason, adding weapons, and also the Dallas Cowboys maybe subtracting, but just saying, we got Dak Prescott. We think he's the best quarterback in the division, and that should be enough. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. We are already seeing a two-team race for the American League pennant. Who do you think could be that third team to challenge either Houston or New York? I think it could be the Rays. This offense has been, I would say, frustrating, underwhelming, annoying so far this year, but they have upside. They've got good components to their team. It's just a question of whether or not all those components will hit in a way that is conducive to them reaching their side. I think they could. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they Fitz. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And God and being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line, and we either go to San Jose too. Maybe a small player chance. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow! In game live, prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are gonna be all good in game six at home. But boy, you want to give the eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24/7 sports wagering network. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. Make sure you are following us on Twitter. That's at Sports Grid and at Sports Grid TV. For the latest news, notes, and information, of course, picks against the spread from a lot of our hosts, not to mention our fun content as well from Ben Stevens, Gabe Morency, and of course, our very own George Kurtz. So, George, we have basically one week to go until the halfway point. I mean, we're past the halfway point of the fantasy baseball season. Uh, Have you done any fantasy football drafts is the question. A couple of weeks away from training camp open. Any best ball drafts? Are you getting ready for that? I've done some best ball. Uh, I probably play more uh, best ball now than anything else. I mean, we are a gambling network, so I uh, spend most of my time on uh, gambling than anything else. My home league, the draft won't be for another, you know, I hope six, eight weeks, uh, so as late as possible. I'm one of those people. I like the draft. I mean, whatever the opening day of football is, September 7th or so. If I could draft September 6th, I would do it. You know, but Me too. The hardest thing I'll do all year, Craig, all year is set up that draft. It's amazing. Guys have every excuse of why they can't make a draft, right? Even nowadays, most cool. of our drafts aren't even live anymore, right? We all do it all True. via a Zoom call or whatever it is. You do it online. We right. don't get together because of COVID and everything else. But now I got to rearrange my sock drawer. I got to do this. I can't make it. Like, you you got to be kidding me. Eventually, it's just it's the, the draft is this date. Make it or don't. I don't care anymore. But uh, no, the only draft I've uh, regular draft, not best ball draft that I've done is my, uh, this is not even a regular one, my dynasty league. 
That's the, right. the, the people that's Sirius XM, that league, with the, mm -hmm. uh, those guys there. That draft took place shortly after the draft, and that's done already. So that one's Lovely. done. I have done no regular drafts yet, thankfully. I try to say I try and wait till August before I get those going. Listen, I, I'm I'm exactly the same way, but I think the preparation definitely begins in August for a lot of people too, especially with the preseason. August fourth is the first NFL preseason game, and training camps open on the twenty third. Twenty third of July, less than two weeks away. That is crazy. All right, time for some fantasy or reality. For your weekend viewing, there's been some fun NBA Summer League games to watch. I don't know if anybody caught those over the weekend, but there was one player who showed up a little bit unexpectedly, and that is the defensive end, the great defensive end for the Cleveland Browns. Miles Garrett showed up and, uh, you know, played a little Cleveland Cavaliers basketball there, uh, at least, you know, temporarily. And I guess you have to wonder about two-sport athletes. We hear about it all the time. It's just so rare in this day and age, George, because of the contracts. And, and, you know, once you sign a big contract, it's in the clause. You can't play anywhere else. You can only play for us. But let's take this one to the next level for some fun. Fantasy reality, the Cleveland Cavaliers, George, should offer Miles Garrett, defensive end of the Browns, a contract or tryout. Excuse me, a tryout, fantasy or reality. Yeah, this is, this is one of the last things yesterday. All right. First, I can't think the Browns are all that happy about this. For a couple of reasons. One, I have to think this is against this contract in the first place. Usually these contracts have all these sports you're not allowed to play. And I got to think basketball, especially any kind of competitive basketball, might be one of them. You could turn an ankle, you could break an ankle, tear ligaments in there real easy, right? Uh, I'm always surprised it doesn't have more in a basketball game. You know, you jump it up for whatever and you come down on someone's foot and there you go, turning an ankle and stuff like that. So always surprised by that. That being said, it, when it, the question is, should we offer him a tryout? Not a contract, a tryout. Of course. Why wouldn't you? You got nothing to lose here, right? Let's see what he can do. You know, if he's great, fine. If he's not, hey, it's a tryout. Who cares? You move on. Plus, it's good. It's a good PR stunt as well, right? You get some interest there. So, I mean, in my mind, this is reality. I don't see the, what's the downpour here. The Browns are going to be ticked off at you. Who cares? Unless you go really close to them, I don't see a, a down point here. Yes, I think this is a reality. They should offer him a tryout. Yeah, I'm going to go fantasy here. It's pointless, and I like the idea, and you're right, George, from a PR perspective. It becomes interesting, but the reality is he'll never be able to play on the Cavs. I'm sure there's something in his contract from the Browns that states he can't, and all he's got to do is twist an ankle or hurt an Achilles or something happens with his knee, and he's done. He's arguably the best player on the Cleveland Browns. I don't even know if there's even an argument there. If he's close to it, if he's not number one, he's number two or number three. Uh, you're also taking this away from somebody else who legitimately can make the team. George likes the fun stunts. I'll just be the old man for the first time on this show when I have George here. Normally, it is George being the old man. I got fantasy here. Miles Garrett, stay away. Play defensive end for the Browns. They're definitely going to need you. You probably don't even have a quarterback this year, by the way. So I got Get off my lawn. All right, there you go. All right, so this is a tough one to cover. I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but Brett put it in, so we'll do our best. Uh, social media popping off about Zach Wilson, quarterback of the New York Jets. Uh, definitely his off-the-field escapades appear to be pretty legendary, having romantic involvement with uh, his, apparently with his mom's best friend. I'm probably getting some of this wrong, so I apologize in advance. Then some other pictures going uh, on with his current girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend. Uh, I'm not really sure which way to go with this whole thing, George, but we'll throw it out there. Your opinion of Zach Wilson uh, as a quarterback changed this weekend after seeing some of these potential escapades. Now, again, this is like TMZ stuff. We don't know if it's real or not, but it made the rounds fantasy or reality. I'll be the, I gotta admit, uh, if Brett didn't send me this yesterday, I would not have heard about this. I don't think I saw it on my Twitter feed. Uh, you mentioned it. this is all TMZ stuff. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not true. Uh, we are in the month of July. All right. In July, the NFL is dead until training camps open in, I think, two weeks. Uh, you said it earlier. So there you go. there's a lot of stuff that goes on like this, you know, so because they're finding news. And so now this is news. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Has my opinion changed? No, that'd be a fantasy. It hasn't. I don't care. All right. You tell me a lot of these kids aren't doing it. Let's just, let's just assume this is true, by the way. 
All right, that he right. is uh, the right term sleeping with his uh, his mother's uh, friend, best friend, whatever. I can't even believe be. this made the show, Not sure. honestly. <laughs> it's there are a lot of things I would have thought about. We were talking about today. Granted, this would not be one of them. I didn't. I still didn't think yet. Though sending this, uh, he sent the text last night. It would be one of them. Not until uh, Brett told me before the show. We'll get some Zach Wilson on there today. I'm like, okay, he's going to go with this. Uh, I'm going to say it's fantasy. I think this goes on in the NFL a lot. So I do. Do I think he's a worse quarterback now because he's screwing around in July? No, I think a lot of these players do that. You know, uh, do I have more concerns about him? Sure, but I have concerns about him anyway. You know, I think the Jets have done a decent job of putting better players around him this year, giving him some more weapons here. Certainly not a finished product at all here. But uh, no, fantasy, in my opinion, has not changed because of what's going on uh, or what happened this weekend and the stuff that came out. I, I said, you said it, I said it. I don't even know if it's true. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But to me, this would have been in one ear and out the other if we weren't talking about it. Yeah, the internet is always true, George, from what I understand. But yeah, look, I I, I think Analyze. that my opinion hasn't changed about him. I'm still confident that he could be capable in the NFL. Uh, he's a quarterback. He's in New York. Well, what are you going to say? I mean, this is the, the mecca of playing in sports is playing in New York at a very premium position. Unfortunately, we saw that go the other way for Matt Harvey. Hopefully it does not happen for uh, Zach Wilson. But by the way, Zach Wilson has yet to perform in the NFL like Matt Harvey did as a pitcher of the New York Mets. We know he had a lot of fun, too. Uh, I'll say fantasy does not affect anything for me on the field uh, one way or the other. But, Brett, thank you for putting it in the show and, and having us talk about it here today. Now, much more excited to talk about our final story here on the show. Now, in uh, the one on the one hand, this is very unfortunate because, George, uh, there is a couple – that uh, may that got fined a lot of money for doing something that they probably were unaware of. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Seemingly, I don't know how this is possible, uh, but this couple apparently were feeding ducks and were fined for doing so. Now, for those of you who may be wondering what's the big deal with feeding ducks, well, obviously when you feed ducks, the food goes in one, uh, and and it definitely comes out the other in a big way, especially when it is not duck food. What is duck food? I'm not even sure. George, I would ask you, living in the Northeast, living in New York, fantasy or reality, you have fed the ducks. And there's a picture of Tony Soprano in the water. Uh, yeah, uh, rest in peace, Paulie Walnuts, who passed away over the weekend, right? Uh, have I fed uh, ducks? Sure, of course I have. Who hasn't? Uh, and I didn't even thought about it, uh, that it could be a, a bad thing. I get where you're going with this. I, I wish we've heard the complaints here. Not so much from ducks. We get, uh, geese, Long Island geese up here, uh, that people complain about a lot. You know, and there's, listen, there's ton of them, uh, tons of them, uh, that come around and they do leave a mess, uh, wherever they go, but such is life. It's wildlife. It is what it is. But yes, I have fed the ducks, uh, uh, not so much where I live now, but when I used to live in, uh, out in Nassau County, there was a pond that was close by. You know, you take the take the kids by whatever it was, and there you go. You got ducks, and you, yeah, you feed them. Never thought that it was a, a negative thing to you know to feed something, but I get why some people would complain. And there might have been signs there telling us not to feed the ducks. I honestly don't remember, right? You know, uh, if there was or wasn't. But uh, yeah, this is reality. I have fed the ducks. Yeah, of course I fed ducks here too. Now we now Florida is a little different, obviously, George. Now we have ducks literally everywhere in Florida. You, I mean, any store, any area, these ducks are out ready to eat wherever you go. Gas, like literal gas stations. Uh, these ducks are smart. They're out there now. Now I live in a community. Now again, what they're trying to do here in 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 Texas apparently is their HOA was very specific about doing this. Now regardless of that, they got to figure something out and. Uh, look, I know they got warnings and all that, but to lose their house over this is crazy. Now, in uh, in my community that I live in, interestingly enough, this is a true story. So uh, I, we've lived here approximately uh, 16 years. And when we first got here, George, there we live in, you know, where there are lakes in, in our community. It's Florida. And ducks were all over the place in the community. And it got really out of hand because, again, people were feeding the ducks and there was literal... Uh, poop everywhere in the community. So the HOA uh, decided to get rid of all the ducks, basically to have somebody come in and take them and put them somewhere else. But they couldn't stop them because they just kept coming back. So there are a couple of people, this is a true story, in my community who would follow the ducks to their nests and take the eggs 
from the ducks to prevent them from having ducks all over the place in our community. And then I guess they would end up freezing eggs or do, doing something with them. I'm not really sure. But George, that is a true story going on here in my community. Every once in a while, I still see them here, but they don't last long. They remove them and put them in a different place. So there you go. But I, yes, I have fed the ducks. It reminds me of my neighbor right across the street here. He's got traps set out in his, uh, in his driveway. Uh, and I'm, I, I, we do get raccoons here, but the traps are too small for a raccoon. We get groundhogs. Uh, I've seen possums in my backyard, stuff like that. And I'm like, but it's during the day he's got these things set up. I'm like, what are you doing? Well, he's catching squirrels and then transporting them 10, 15 miles away. Squirrels. There are hundreds and thousands. You can't catch enough squirrels to move them. I was like, what are you doing? Apparently, he doesn't like them dropping whatever they drop out of the trees, uh, the acorns. They get stuck in his grass. He's one of those people uh, who loves his grass, you know. And it's the yeah, best grass uh, on the block. Yeah. It is. I wish my grass looked like that. It does not. My grass is green. Makes me happy. Uh, but, yeah, I'm like, and my wife, my kids and I are just watching him. Catch one, only one squirrel at a time. Puts it in his car and drives it away to, like, a uh, park 10 miles away. It's like, you, you're, you're nuts. Do you, have, you don't have anything better to do than try and do this. Good luck to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the next thing for Florida is the iguanas. That's the next problem. That's I mean, it's the biggest problem we have, and it's the next one, too. But uh, ducks, not as big of a problem, I think, but they are everywhere, literally. All right, coming up next, it's time for the Sports Grid 60. And then George and I got to get out of here because the early line is coming up at the top of the hour at 12 o'clock Eastern. And I'll be right back with you here on Newswire at 2 o'clock Eastern. Stay on the grid. We'll be right back. Great, great. might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The early line. Should Seattle really be okay with running this one-two punch out of the quarterback position? I mean, Drew Locke slash Geno Smith or Jimmy G? Which avenue would make more sense? Maybe they are doing this right because I can never fault a team for bottoming out. But be true to the tank. What's DK Metcalf doing on your roster still? Trade DK Metcalf. Pick up another first round this so you can get your quarterback and wide receiver next year to build the next 10 years in Seattle. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Miles Michaelis. Uh, a couple of years ago, Gray, he was one of the best pitchers in baseball. And then he was disappearing for a couple of years with injuries. And wow, is he back? ERA under three. And the whip is incredible. I think he's at the top of the National League, if I'm not mistaken. Michaelis is like probably a guy who I could see potentially having a three and a half ERA or under for the season, which is, you know, that's, that's solid. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. If you were an odds maker, who would you say is the betting favorite to land Kevin Durant for this upcoming season? I would still say Phoenix of that group, but if DeAndre signs an offer sheet, then it gets really interesting. And I also think that some teams are just not going to back down from certain positions. Like he is about to be entering year 16. He is post Achilles. He's still awesome, but I'm not trading but so much. Like I'm not gutting right. my roster for Kevin Durant. The Sports Grid Network. Sports professor Rick Harrow inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute downtown Glasgow. This is a bigger week than we thought. Just now, a verdict came down in a fraud trial in a Swiss court, which may impact FIFA for years to come. Former President Sepp Blatter was accused of providing 2 million Swiss francs to Michael Platini, also with FIFA, in 2011. It took 11 years to get to this point but a Swiss jury said not guilty. Uh, whether there's outrage or not, that's all the soccer establishment is talking about here in Scotland and otherwise. And one of the things that will happen is between now and the World Cup in Qatar in November, there will be conversation, but this issue, at least in the short term, is put to bed. You can get into other issues like women's rights, 
Revenues, International Television, and others. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Sports News Minute. The MLB draft is coming up on Sunday, at least the first round of the MLB draft is coming up on Sunday, and the Atlanta Braves and Kansas City Royals have made a trade. Drew Waters, former top prospect of the Braves, goes to KC, and uh, along with another pitcher, and in exchange, the Braves get the 35th pick overall. Haven't seen draft picks traded all that often, Uh, but yes, we do have a trade today. Let's kick it over to George. Here's the Sports Grid 60. All right, we've been talking about the All Star Game uh, pretty much all show long here. So uh, I maybe not the All Star Game itself, but I'm going to complain about the uh, the Derby here. Not so much complain. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see the bet the strongest hitters compete in this thing. I don't care if you're on the All Star team or not. I hate the fact that some of these players aren't going to do it. Aaron Judge says he'll never do it again. Why? You put on a show in Miami. It was fun seeing you hit the, uh, you know, pretty much the ball out of the stadium or off the glass in the uh, over left field. It was fun. It would be fun seeing you in Dodger Stadium hitting over the awning there in left center. You know, I want to see Giancarlo Stanton. I want to see Alonzo. I understand Vladimir Guerrero not participating because uh, he's got the wrist injury. He doesn't want to exasperate it. I understand that. You know, you would do over to your team first. But I want to see Shohei Otani hit the ball as far as he can. I don't care if you're on the All-Star team or not. I don't care if Joey Gallo can't hit a fastball. He can hit batting practice pitching. Let him play there. Let's see how far he can hit the ball. Yeah, I agree. Get the best home run hitters in that game at all costs for sure. One thing we're not going to see in the game this year, we haven't seen it over the past few, are the actual players wearing their uniforms. Oh. The All-Star Game just released the uh, Nike uniforms for the 2022 All-Star Game. They actually look pretty cool. Uh, but there is something to be said where you know, it was kind of you know great to see players actually wearing the jersey of their team so you could root for your player. So we're going to put a player from every team in the All-Star Game, but they're not going to be wearing their actual jersey. Hmm. Not sure if that works. Hey, thanks again to LTN as always for doing a great job getting us on the air, our graphics department and Danny and Ryan. Thanks to our producer, Brett Levy. And for George Kurtz filling in the last couple of days, George, thanks to you. I'm Craig Mish. I'll see you at 2 o'clock Eastern for Newsbar. Have a great day. Great, great.